Noah Church. This is my video coaching series. I have an email here that I'm going to share with you. It's about feeling hopeless and also sharing your story of struggle with addiction and addiction recovery with your partner. He says, So I've been on and off the NoFap ship for a while, and this crisis ate me alive for almost two years. And a lot of guys take a long time to get over this, to get over any addiction. Some people never recover, but that's not you. You're on the path to recovery because you've recognized it's a problem in your life. And as long as you're truly trying your best and remaining consistent and persistent in your efforts and learning from your mistakes, then you're on the right path and there's nothing to be ashamed of, man. A lot of guys take a while for this, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to get there. I failed with some girls, which, by the way, is one of the worst sensations I've ever felt. <sighs> Yeah, I know what you mean, man. A lot of us have been there, too. I mean, it's supposed to be one of the best moments in your life. You've got this wonderful, beautiful girl right there in front of you. You're about to have sex. And it doesn't happen. Because for some reason, your body's not capable of doing what the male body should be capable of doing. And you see that look of disappointment and confusion in her eyes. She's thinking, what, does he not find me attractive? And you're thinking, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Why can't I do this? I should be able to do this. She's beautiful. I love her. What the hell? <laughs> Man, that's painful. So I know how you feel. A lot of us have been there. I'm barely studying like I'm supposed to. I really feel like my life is pointless. Got no job. No girlfriend. Yeah, I've spoken with a lot of guys. I've heard from a lot of guys who use language like this. They feel like they have no purpose in their life, no drive, no motivation. They have no place. And you have to ask yourself, why, really, am I feeling this way? I mean, is it because I'm so caught up in the porn that I just can't care about anything else? Or is it also because I'm really not passionate about what I'm studying? You mentioned you could barely study, but maybe that's because you're not in the right subject. I mean... Think about this for me. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the absolute pinnacle of passion, like you feel like there's nothing else in the world you'd rather be doing, you're amazingly fulfilled by this, you wake up every day and you're just so excited to go to work or to go study. On a scale of 1 to 10, how do you feel about what you are studying right now? Unless you're that 8 or a 9 or a 10, then maybe it's time to make a change. Maybe it's time to change majors or... To drop out, I'm not telling you to drop out of college, but if that's not really what's lighting a fire inside of you, then maybe it's not right for you. I mean, humans are capable of resigning ourselves to all sorts of things. We're very adaptable creatures. You can resign yourself to studying something or to taking a job that you don't really care about for a paycheck, but at the end of the day, you're never going to achieve a level of greatness in a field that you don't care about. So ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing right now? Is it because my mom told me to? Is it because you thought you might be able to get a good paying job that way? Or is it because you truly love and are passionate about what you're studying? And a lot of guys feel like all their problems come from porn, from using porn. But the truth is, it's a circle. Porn addiction causes certain problems in your life, but problems in your life also lead you back to needing porn to solve the pain and let you forget. So you can't just fight this battle on one front. You can't just focus on you know, going to the gym every day. If I go to the gym every day, then I won't want the porn anymore. That's not necessarily true. But you also can't just quit porn and think, okay, I quit porn. Now I can just sit here and wait until my life gets better. That doesn't work either. You have to tack it on both fronts. You have to, say, go to the gym if you don't do that right now. That will help you feel better about yourself. It'll give you more energy, more confidence. It'll make it easier to also focus on how you're going to quit using porn. And as you improve your life in other ways, it gets easier to not use porn. And as you use porn less, it gets easier to improve your life in other ways. So really think about why you feel like life is pointless right now. Think about what you can do about it. Some months ago, I dated a really gorgeous girl. 
But even though it had barely started, I knew that was it. It couldn't go any further because at some point, she would want to have sex and it wouldn't work out. I still kind of like her and it kills me knowing that I can't have her. How the hell would I say to her that I'm a porn addict? I can't. Well, it kills me to hear you tell yourself this story. Because really, you're telling yourself this story that it'll never work, I'll never be able to have sex with her, I'll never be anything more than an addict, I'll never be able to tell her or open up and be vulnerable with her. We'll never, the relationship will never work, so I'm just going to quit right now. I mean, that sucks, man. Why would you tell yourself that? No. I mean, she obviously, you said you dated her for a while, so if she went on more than one date with you, she obviously liked you back. You found her gorgeous, you found her attractive, and you really have two paths in front of you here. You could take the path of least resistance, do what you've always done, go back to porn and not even try to make this work, just give it up for lost or before it even got the chance to fail. And you know what goes, what, where that path leads. Or you could take a risk, you could open yourself up, be vulnerable, try something you've never tried before, Tell her you're a porn addict and see what happens. She might shoot you down. It might hurt a lot, but you might have this relationship that blossoms into something beautiful. And down that path, there's hope. Down the path you're choosing right now, there's no hope. Because if you're telling yourself this story of, I'm worthless, I'm never going to make anything work for me, I'm never going to be successful with women... If you keep telling yourself that story, that will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You'll have blinders on to the opportunities around you. You won't be able to see the joy and the wonderful things in this world because you're telling yourself that story. I know you can't just think yourself into a positive frame of mind, but you can choose how to act. And in this case, I would talk to her. And you ask, how would I tell her that I'm a porn addict? And I think there's a right way and then there's a wrong way to go about doing this. I mean, it's probably not going to work out too well if you go to her and just say, Oh, I'm just such a worthless piece of shit. I'm an addict and I can't stop whacking off to sick, disgusting porn. <laughs> and I'm never going to be a strong man. I'm never going to get over this. My life is purposeless and pointless. And that's not a very attractive thing to say to a woman. And even if that's how you feel sometimes... I'm sure that's not how you feel all the time, and that doesn't have to be true. There's a different way to tell her about this. You can say, you know, listen, darling, I, there's been something that's been weighing on my mind recently. I, I learned about something that I never really thought about before by watching, you know, this video or I read this article, however you learned about this, and it really opened my mind to how I've been acting in my own life and made me think about my future and what I want that to look like. And then, you know, ask her, you know how most guys use porn, right? I mean, you've heard guys talking about porn and, you know, with the internet these days, it's so easy to access that pretty much every guy out there uses it. Well, I realized after watching, you know, this video, this TED Talk, that, man, porn has just really had a detrimental effect on my life. And I've realized that it's colored in a bad way how I view women and how I interact with women in my relationships, and it's even given me a sexual dysfunction. It's made me more interested in porn than in a real sexual relationship with a woman. And that's not what I want at all. And what I'm really interested in is love and connection with a person I can really admire. So I decided to quit using porn altogether. But I'm really in this space of exploration and discovery as I rediscover who I am without that part of myself and rediscover what real relationships are like without that negative influence on them. So I just wanted to let you know that you know, that's the headspace I'm in right now and just in case you noticed anything weird or odd about me <laughs> as I explore this new side of myself, that's probably why. And you know, I just want to be honest with you. So if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Or maybe you'd even be interested in sitting down with me and watching that video about this. It's, it's a TED Talk. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Uh, I'm talking about Gary Wilson's TED Talk here if you haven't seen it. It's called The Great Porn Experiment. Look it up on YouTube. That's how I opened my eyes to all this information. Great introductory video. Anyway, 
You just have to come at it from a place of strength. That's how I would tell her. Come at it from this mindset of, yeah, I've recognized I have this problem in my life, but I'm on the path toward fixing it. I'm discovering new things about myself. I'm making progress. And I'd love to continue on this journey of getting to know you. I think you're really fun. I think you're really great. I'd like to keep uh, having fun with you and talking and getting to know each other. I just want to let you know that this is what I'm going through right now. And that's all you really have to say. And she can decide for herself if that's something that she wants to be involved in. But let her know so that she can make an informed decision. She might choose, man, like... I don't really want to be involved with a guy with that sort of issues. And she might say, you know, I think we should just be friends. In which case, what have you really lost? You know, either you were just going to go that way anyway. But in this case, you took a chance. Or she might say, wow, I mean, thanks for telling me all that. Thanks for being so honest with me. You know, seldom do guys really open up to me like that. So thank you. And then she might take a little time to think about it and then say, yeah, I'd like to keep getting to know you. And she might become a very supportive partner for you. It might blossom into a beautiful relationship where she helps you rewire. I mean, she's not going to care if she starts to fall in love with you that your dick's not going to work for a while. As long as she knows that there's light at the end of the tunnel and she can help you get there and someday you can have a beautiful sexual relationship, she's going to want to be with you. So my advice is to take a chance. Open up. Allow yourself to be a little vulnerable. Break down that wall that you've erected between yourself and others. Otherwise, you're just going down the road that you've gone down your whole life, choosing porn and escape and the easy path over the hard path, the challenging path that really leads to the rewards in life. Like it wasn't enough with all my struggles to quit PMO, about a month ago I had a terrible, actually the worst, of my relapses when I really felt that I reached rock bottom. I'd entered a deep phase of depression and masturbated almost every hour of every day, one after the other, for two weeks. I felt terrible for days, I barely ate, didn't get out of the house, even out of my bedroom. Yeah, that's a bad relapse, I mean, what can I say? You binged, you binged on porn, and that's pretty common. You know, with any addiction, what addicts are really seeking is a way to forget about the pain, forget about the loneliness, forget about the lies, forget about the depression, forget about their whole life for a little while by you know, playing some blackjack at the casino or taking a shot of whiskey or sitting down to the computer, opening up Pornhub and whacking off. And what all of these addictive behaviors and substances has, have in common is that they're temporary. They're not truly satisfying. They don't truly solve your problems. They just let you forget for a little while. So addicts tend to start chasing that feeling of forgetfulness. They get one high and then they chase the next. Then they chase the next. Then they chase the next. And over time, they start to realize that it doesn't feel as good anymore. They're always chasing that feeling of the first high. And that's because they're desensitizing themselves. And they're getting to the point at which they're not even doing it anymore because it feels good. They're doing it not to feel bad. And that's a point at which people either die <laughs> from overdosing on heroin or something, or they hit rock bottom and realize that this is never going to make them happy. And then they make big changes in their lives and they move forward in a new direction. And that's the point at which you're at it now. But when I realized that no one but me would have would be able to help myself get out of this misery, I stopped right there. And I don't want to touch myself and watch porn ever again. But this is so damn hard. I'm familiar with Your Brain on Porn, The Reboot Nation, Sacred Sexuality Project, but it's like these guys are so far from me, from my reality. Do you know a way that would make my abstinence a little easier? I finally got the balls to tell some of my most trusted friends, and it kind of helps. It actually helps a lot, so can you help me to become better? I got a change, and I'm doing this because I finally started to love myself. Thank you very much. Well, good for you, man, on telling your friends, manning up, and starting to break down those barriers between yourself and others. 
That's a huge step in the right direction. I mean, as we break down those that wall of shame that keeps us locked in our heads, locked in that PMO cycle box, that prison, then we break open that prison cell and we put ourselves out there into the world and we build a real, positive, satisfying life for ourselves. And that's a great step in the right direction. As far as how to move forward with this, I know you're reading my book right now. Keep reading it. Read especially the guide to recovery section several times. There's so much more information in there than I could ever give in these videos. A lot of tools and techniques and tips to get you past this addiction and toward a positive, fulfilling life. Read that book, Whack Addicted Internet Porn. And, like I said, if it's not too late, if you haven't already sabotaged that relationship to the point where it wouldn't be appropriate anymore to open up to her, then open up to that girl that you like. Open up to her. Talk to her, like I talked to the camera a few minutes ago, and see what happens. Man up, grab your fucking balls, and take a chance, dude. It's time to make big changes in your life. You say, I gotta change, and I'm doing this because I finally started to love myself. Thank you very much. That is huge. And that is what makes me believe that you're going to be successful in this journey, man, because you're starting to love yourself. And coming from a place of love is the way that we really get over an addiction. You can't get over an addiction by hating the part of yourself that's addicted. Because self-hatred and shame, all those negative feelings, are only going to throw you back into the cycle. It's love of yourself and of the world and of others that brings you above it. So if anyone out there has a similar story or a question or a success story, send it to me, three to four detailed but brief paragraphs, and I might respond to it in a video like this. You can find my contact information in the description below. If you appreciate the information in these videos, if they've added value to your life and you'd like to show your appreciation for, that, for those uh, videos, then you can donate to me at my website, addictedtointernetporn.com. Coach Church out.